Welcome back to the Creepiest Podcast. This is episode number 116. Colossal Claude, Cryptids Plague, Pennsylvania, and upcoming events. Yeah, and today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. You can get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash cheapgeek. It's over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Yeah. You like that? Yeah. Works out pretty good. It's basically going to be taking long road trips. You can get a free audiobook and play it at your leisure. You can exchange books if you need to. It's a, it's a pretty good deal, actually. We like it quite a bit. So, this is the Creepy Geeks Podcast, episode number 116. If it's your first time tuning in to the podcast, let's tell you what this podcast is all about. Well, broadcasting paranormal news and fun stories from our Creek Geeks Bunker Studio in the mountains of Western North Carolina. We're an offbeat news podcast that takes a light-hearted approach to the strange, the stupid, paranormal, and tech topics circulating the web. Very nice. And we do have a little bit of a phone number for you to call in if you'd like to share with us if you have a weird story or something that happened, experience maybe that you'd like to kind of share that's along the same lines of what we talk about here on the podcast. That phone number, 575-208-4025. It is a Roswell area code. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so there's a couple different ways you can be a part of the podcast you can subscribe on youtube and if you look for creep geeks on youtube you can find us and be sure to hit that bell so you can be notified when we have a new video slash podcast uploaded for you mm-hmm. you can also find us on itunes iheart radio soundcloud google play music spotify spotify basically anywhere you can listen to an audio podcast we have a pretty active facebook group called the creep geeks facebook group <laughs> very nice it's kind of weird to and sort of... Well, just... We have an official page, too, and that's Creep Geeks Podcast. Yes, and you can also go to creepgeeks.com and find the latest podcast there, as long as links, along with links that we'd like to share. And a Contact Us button where you can click Contact Us, write us, email us, and the same thing goes with our uh, contact link, anonymity guaranteed. Yeah, and also, if you are a paranormal group, um, whether it's cryptids, paranormals, the whole thing all sort of lumped together. You'd anything like to get 14. a hold, anything fourteen. If you'd like to get a hold of us and uh, you know share the uh, wealth, if you will, we are certainly open to that. Mm-hmm. And we uh, we we kind of want to be a part of everything in this particular region, so we uh, welcome all contact. Maybe there's some things that we can do in a joint venture together. Oh, yeah, because we're not just a podcast. We also joined a paranormal investigation team. Yeah, and we have a video series called In Real Life, We Joined a Paranormal Investigation Team. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, so we kind of get out there, kind of do all the stuff. So we like cryptids, we like paranormal, all that kind of stuff. So if you uh, would like to kind of reach out to us and say, hey, we welcome it. Yes. Absolutely. Because why not? Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. You're like, what? (laughs) There's no good reason not to. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, be sure to be sure to tune in. Man, we do podcast every week, and we have content every week for you guys. And uh, for those of you who've been listening and sticking with us, we very, very much appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, and for those of you who have not been sticking with us and don't know we're doing this, well, that's okay. But you're missing something fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, um, oh, one more thing. If you'd like to passively support the podcast with little to no effort on your own, and it won't cost you anything at all. You can, because so many of these podcasts out there, like join, you know, on Patreon, send us a dollar, all that kind of stuff. Well, guess what? What? We are lazy, <laughs> and we would like to reach out to the lazy people out there who may like to support us without using little to no effort, you know, on their part. Yeah. It's pretty simple. When you shop on Amazon.com, as most people do, if you use our affiliate link, We'll get a small percentage of whatever it is that you buy. Doesn't cost you anything at all. Won't change the price. Oh. Yeah. 
and it helps us to keep the coffee flowing and gas in our albino rhino, our DIY camper van. Yes. Yeah. That link is Amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Cheap Geek, which is basically tied to our other YouTube channel, the Cheap Geek channel. Yes. With over 10 million views and 27,000 subscribers and over 700 videos, there's bound to be something there that you may or may not be interested in. <laughs> so, yeah. But if you didn't get that link, again, Amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Cheap Geek, and it will be in the show notes for this podcast yeah, episode. Yeah, it's an affiliate link. Yep. And that really is about the easiest laziest way to support it's just to do that and you have to remember the link but you know what the link is in the show notes uh, show notes so <laughs> show notes <laughs> it's in the show notes we do happen to have a canadian listener so that was a nod to him <laughs> he's like no it's not but it is so um we do like to start off a podcast with an interesting random factoid yes and we have one and this factoid is about the fly bat aka the fly swatter and this Kind of stems from an experience earlier this week. We were visiting with relatives, and a wasp got into the house. And wasps, as we all know, are assholes. (laughs) Which also makes it Greg's job to kill them. Yes. So, um, Luckily for us, there were four fly swatters. Yeah, that was weird. Well, I figured out why. Why? Two of the fly swatters were were the ones that I I was trying to use. Yeah. That doesn't have the structural integrity built into it to be able to swat a fly. So in other words, when you grabbed it and you swatted at the fly, the fly swatter actually bend. No. You know? So you just whiz right past the stupid fly, or in this case, a wasp. So you were just angering the wasp. I was just whizzing, yeah, whipping through <laughs> it. And, the, and I was like, what? So, and happened to find another fly swatter that had more structural integrity. It's like an old school one, like with a wire, you know, like a, like a coat hanger with a yeah. spatula on the end of it. And finally dispatched said wasp, because we all know wasps are assholes, and took care of it. But it got me thinking, it's like, come on, man, it's 2019, how long has the fly swatter been around, right? You figure they'd have this sort of thing fixed by now. Well, yeah, and it's funny that you mentioned, um, you know, the old school thing, because the first American versions of the fly swatter were actually made of either a yardstick and window screen, or a baseball bat and window screen. Nice. Yes, and that's, if you think, though, if you missed, the structural integrity of those things would have done some damage inside your house. Yeah, can you imagine, it's almost as bad as when people were using the Wii controllers and just blowing holes through your TVs. <laughs> I and mean, stuff like, like swinging a bat around. Yes. Yeah, but the original fly swatter was actually invented simultaneously in multiple places. In about 1780 or 1798, Horace Spatula of Hungary invented a spatula but it was designed to kill the common house fly Uh, at the same time in england it was being developed and i guess the name spatula eventually went towards what we now use to flip hamburgers and pancakes and pancakes yes (laughs) Uh, and we consider it an indispensable tool for the the kitchen but from there, I guess they became more commonplace in Europe. Fast forward, 1905, the state of Kansas was plagued by an overabundance of flies. And they were causing an annoyance. They were spreading disease, foodborne illnesses, stuff like that. So um, Dr. Samuel Crumbine, a member of the Kansas Board of Health, wanted to raise awareness for the threat of flies. He was inspired by a chant at Topeka softball game, Swat the Ball. In a health bulletin he published soon afterward, he exhorted to Kansasans to swat the fly. Kansasans. Yeah, and from there, um, as a response to his little campaign, a school teacher invented the fly bat, which consisted of a yardstick or a bat and a piece of screen attached to it. That is what Americans now use, or, or a modified version, as the fly swatter. There you go. Yeah. Learn something new on the old Creep Geeks but, podcast. Yeah, such a simple little thing, and it's got like this super rich history. So, <laughs> very nice. Yeah. So, speaking of super rich history, we do have some paranormal news for upcoming events. Oh. Yeah. So, as you know, or may not know, with this podcast, we do uh, try to go out and do events and conferences and things like that. And one of the ones that's coming up for us is the Georgia Bigfoot Conference. Oh, yeah. And it's in Georgia. <laughs> yes. 
just in case you were wondering, right? Well, you can get. So you can go, hold on, to georgiabigfootconference.com. Yes. To find out some more information. This is the first annual Georgia Bigfoot Conference. And at the same time, the North Georgia Comic Con will be held. <laughs> so as I read this, I'm like, wait a minute. They're going to do the Bigfoot Conference and the North Georgia Comic Con at the Rayburn County Civic Center in Clayton, Georgia, at the same time. Yes. Same time, same place. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so not only is there going to be cryptid stuff there about Bigfoot, Mr. Sasquatch, right? There's also going to be people dressed as Comic Con type stuff. Could be anything. I mean, yes. it could be like Pokemon. Um, Chewbacca. It could be like Chewbacca. <laughs> I'm just, I don't really know very many cryptid, I mean, uh, Comic Con type characters, but um, yeah, we're going to be vendors there. So you can certainly come by and talk to us. And if you do and you mention the podcast, you'll get a little swag from us. Yes. Yeah. So there's that. And we're also going to be there with one of the presenters, right? Because yes. there are some headline speakers. There's uh, Matthew Dell who's Bigfoot tracker and researcher, right? Yeah, he's part of Mountain Empire Cryptid Research Organization. And you got Angela Shear, who's the executive director of Tennessee Move Mutual on. UFO Network, MUFON, right? And head of the Parashear Research in Nashville. Mm -hmm. um, Rick Rellis, he's a well-known Bigfoot, I probably said his name wrong, uh, investigator for BFRO, right? Bigfoot Research Organization, unlike BTO, which is Bachman Turner Overdrive, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, John Bruner is going to be there. He's the commander of Bigfoot 911 or 911, mm -hmm. right? Research team based in Marion, North Carolina. Um, also have John Dixon, certified paranormal investigator through the Warren Institute of Paranormal Studies, who's also a certified field investigator for the Mutual uh, UFO Network, MUFON. Hmm. And? Yeah. Well, that's what I, I thought you, this is the part oh. where you were going to say something. <laughs> and M&D Paranormal. A leading paranormal investigative group throughout the Carolinas and eastern Tennessee. Yep, and Israel Perry, who's a paranormal and occult researcher in uh, North Carolina and South Carolina. And us, we're going to be there as just vendors, just kind of hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> checking it out. Now, um, we should note uh, that in our ear, uh, In Real Life series, we've joined a paranormal investigation team. Um, we The team we joined is M&D Paranormal. Yes. dun 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 that's full disclosure, everybody. So, and not that it matters. I just felt like I needed to say that. So, hopefully, we'll be sitting right next to each other so I can show them my modified fly swatter. Yeah. So, <laughs> 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 all right. Um, what's so funny that you can't see is that we have a dog named Pepper who basically thinks that when we do the podcast, we're talking to her. And she's up on the desk. Coughing into the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so that's a little bit of a, a local event thing that's kind of happening our way. Um, we'll be there. And uh, just so you know, tickets are $10 if you buy them online. If you get them at the door, they will be $5 more. And this is going to be April 26th through the 28th in Clayton, Georgia. 26, 27, 28. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So that's nice. And it's going to be the Rayburn County Civic Center, 201 West Savannah Street, Clayton, Georgia, 30525. And we do have links to all of this in the show notes. So if you're interested in the Georgia Bigfoot Conference, Check the you link. can go to georgiabigfootconference.com or click the link, which will also be georgiabigfootconference.com. So there you go. Yeah. I'm actually really excited to go. <laughs> yeah. Got some gas. Get all loaded. Just get an oil change. Just get some gas and drive on down there. I was surprised that... Georgia's not that far from where we are. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> we do have some news aside from the paranormal news of we're going to go to a conference. Yes. And this is happening in or near Pennsylvania, otherwise known as Pennsylvania. Yes. From Phantoms and Monsters. Check this out. You know what it is, right? What? Aggressive, upright canine encounters multiple witnesses in cent in Center City. <laughs> or is it Center City? How do you say it? Center, Center County Pennsylvania. Yeah, because it's Central aggressive. County. Aggressive. Yeah. I like that. Aggressive, up. I mean, you know, aggressive, upright canine encounters. Yeah. With multiple witnesses. Dun, dun, dun. Well, the reason it caught my attention is because that's kind of in that Central County, kind of near where <clears throat> that um, 
that mining town kind of fell in and got closed off. I don't know. I don't I think, think so. so. Oh, okay. Well, maybe you, you might yeah. be right. But what I like is the way it kind of reads out here, right? Yeah. Butch Witowski recently received a telephone report of a large, aggressive, upright canine encounter that happened in Rothrock State Park in oh. Center County, right? Yeah. He was on site the next day, which at this point had to be happened to be March 31st, and he filled in the follow, uh, following account, right? Mm-hmm. And this incident would occurred within what they call the Lichen Loop in central Pennsylvania. Yeah. And I think it's called Lichen Loop because we've had recent reports within yeah, the past year or so there. of of these upright canine or canine cryptids. Aggressive. Yes. Uh, but the report reads that three couples hiking in Rothrock State Forest just outside Pine Grove Mills, Pennsylvania, encountered a bipedal canine. The couples state that between 1 p.m. and 1.30 p.m., while hiking, a large wolf-like creature stepped out of the wooded area near a small clearing. The creature was staring at the group, and when a female member of the party started screaming, the creature took two or three steps towards the group, baring its teeth and growling. All witnesses agree it seemed the screaming definitely set it off to go to an aggressive movement in the direction of the group. The hikers left the area immediately, running for their lives as they put it to the investigators. The description by <laughs> all... <laughs> they, they commenced what we like to call in the biz a haul-ass maneuver. <laughs> no. In other words, a ham. Yeah. The, the thing is, the description by all members of the group, that's important because consistency in a re group reporting is important, state that the creature was between 8 and 10 feet tall, a large wolf-like head, yellow eyes, long muscular arms, massive body build, and strange-looking legs. Hmm. Um, invest <laughs> yeah. Like it needs leg day? <laughs> like little skinny dog legs? Is that what it is? Oh, that would be so weird. Yeah. Investigators from the UFO Research Center of Pennsylvania and Phantoms and Monsters 14 research team met with witnesses and viewed area of sighting but no evidence found. The witnesses were very cooperative and all descriptions matched. A more invasive investigation of the area is being planned, as past reports have been in the general area of Central Central County. Yeah, and they have had yeah. other reports as well, and there's even a map, an interactive map yeah. of that area where they have like the sighting locations in different types. Yeah, these these maps that Lawn Strickling like creates and then people contribute to are amazing. Yeah. So I mean there's a ton of them. It's like over fifty five. Oh, gosh. Sightings in that particular area there. Actually, it's a pretty big area. It, it, it seems like it extends up into New York. Oh. And down so far as in Maryland. It's like a little cluster in Maryland. So there's a large quantity of reported sightings. Oh, kind of weird. Yeah. So, but, hey, man, dog man. There's been reported sightings of dog men here in uh, western North Carolina. Yeah. And one of the things that we'll talk about in our next podcast is we actually went to REI where they had a Sasquatch 101 course done by uh, somebody we we know, <laughs> right, Mr. Christian there, of uh, the Asheville Cryptid Society. They had a little conference talk, if you will, a little uh, presentation about Sasquatch 101, and he actually talked about Dogman. Yeah. So uh, we actually interviewed him in our last podcast, so we might bring him back on if he wants to talk a little bit more uh, specifically about some of the Dogman sighting he's had. And we can get together and sort of talk about, like, why. Or, yeah, why. You know, what's, what's the deal with the dogman? So, I mean, like, what's the deal between dogmen and werewolves? Werewolves. Or <clears throat> what I'm so used to. Or is there a difference? I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, because for me, the description of dogmen and the position people here on the East Coast have of dogman versus, or werewolf or whatever. Yeah, or Wolfman. Or Wolfman is way different than what I'm accustomed to with the description of, like, native werewolf yeah. and native skinwalker. Mm. And as well as, like, the ideologies behind them. Yeah. Because, I don't know, some of these ways... Some like, of these you know, like, yeah, yeah is, is there descriptors between the two? Like, if you were to see one before you screamed and commenced a ham maneuver otherwise a haul ass maneuver <laughs> you know what, what would be some of the details you could look for to determine is it a wolf man a werewolf a dog man yeah you know that kind of thing yeah i don't know but and the reason we are talking about this is because in the past week or so i keep seeing a lot of people yeah reporting dog man sightings so keep your eye out 
Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. All right. So yeah. I think at this point we're going to take a quick break and sort of uh, pass it over to M and D. Have a little commercial hmm. that M and D does, and then when we come back, we're actually going to talk about an upcoming event that's more more close to Western North Carolina than Georgia. Right. Sure. What's it called? Oh, it's called Illuminate. Illuminate. The Psychic and Healing Arts Expo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But first, we're going to take a second and take a little break, and we'll be right back as soon as I can find what I'm looking for. You know what I mean? The goal of M&D Paranormal is to compassionately, knowledgeably, and professionally support and offer paranormal services to those who have been affected by a paranormal experience, including those who have been indirectly affected. Services provided include paranormal investigation, property research, and evidence review of residential, business, and private property locations. Cleansing of these properties are available upon request. No matter the circumstances of the paranormal experience, M&D Paranormal strive to offer a non-judgmental environment to promote education, open communication, and empathy to each individual that chooses to share their experience or come into our service. In achieving this goal, M&D Paranormal is building and bringing together a community of open and like-minded individuals by offering free monthly gatherings and events at the Shop Eclectic, 49 State Street, Marion, North Carolina. Call us anytime at 828-484-1637 or 828-559-2818 or email us at M&D Paranormal. Yeah. And we're back. All right, so with the dog man, right, and the wolf man, and all of that sort of thing, why is there so many sightings? What do you think? Because this is not just in Pennsylvania. I mean, if it goes from New York all the way down to Maryland, and then even around here in western North Carolina, what's up? I'm not sure. Me either. Yeah. Well, maybe I, somebody knows. I don't know. Is it the area itself? I don't know. And But and here's something, too, where it says... Uh, Multiple aggressive dog man. I mean, if you scream, yeah. I mean, and he takes a couple steps forward and screams back. Is that aggressive or defensive? Yeah, I mean, if you if, you know if yeah. you scream and he 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 and we're just saying he because we don't know interprets that as being aggressive. I mean, what happens if he didn't scream? If you know what I'm saying, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's probably maybe some other reports where maybe there really is more aggressive sort of behavior. But, I mean, I don't know. It, it, you know. If you're just minding your own business doing dog man stuff and you step out and you see a bunch of hikers and they start screaming at you, what are you going to do back? Scream. Or run away, right? Charge. I'm going to scream, then I'm going to run away. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Kind of strange. Yeah. Yep. So, anyway, this happened the other day. You should tell people. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. Meteor so, scene in several states, including North Carolina. Yeah, and the thing that got me about this was that um, I woke up and I got a bunch of messages on my phone, and it was all about um, people who kind of live in our general area. Yeah. Did you see a big green light in the sky at about like f anywhere between 5, a little bit before 5 a.m. all the way through 6.30 a.m.? Yeah. And everyone was trying to figure out what it was. According to the American Meteor Society, more than 300 sightings have been reported about a streak across the sky in several states, including North Carolina. Yeah, people in Florida, Alabama, Georgia, yeah. Kentucky, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia reported seeing the fiery ball as well. Yeah, and it's funny because I guess there was a meteor or several meteor occurrences in the past few days because yeah. the National Weather Service also reported another meteor being spotted in Florida um, on that Saturday. So don't freak out. Don't contact MUFON unless it was there was a genuine meteor going on. But it's just amazing to see all the buzz and watch it go down. Yeah. Um, also, though, if you do have um, a UFO or a report that you'd like to make, if you go to our website, creekbeaks.com, on the left-hand side, we have a link for MUFON. Yeah. So you can basically click the link and and fill it out. And it is legit. We actually contacted MUFON, and they said, sure, as long as uh, you know people take it seriously, then they can click that link and follow right on through and fill out a report. So. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. <clears throat> Very nice. But see, here's the thing, though. Um, I think 
that some of these meteors are maybe that Indian satellite that kind of blew up and like spewed possibly what over three thousand pieces of stuff. Yeah. Up in space, that could be hazardous. A few other satellites and stuff like that up there. <laughs> I don't know. So we'll probably start to see more of this, I would think, but I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Okay. And maybe we're not supposed to tie those two things together. I don't know. You know, we don't want to create create like conspiracies. <laughs> we don't want to create no conspiracies, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is something that we have a, a section in the podcast called Creature Feature, right? Yeah. And since you put this in here, you should talk about well, so what this is here. This got me because I always associate the Pacific Northwest with Bigfoot. Like Bigfoot, Sasquatch, that's where he lives. That's what the Pacific Northwest is known for as yeah. far as cryptids. But I actually f- was searching the internet for interesting cryptids, and I came across this article. Um, basically, it starts off, Oregon's most famous mythical creature. It might not be the beast you think it is. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. So everyone highlights, like these days, everyone highlights the Pacific Northwest at, with um, Bigfoot. But yeah. that's not the case because he's what? he's only been famous for the f- past few decades. The original most famous mythical creature. In Oregon or he, in the Pacific yeah, Northwest? Yes. It's called Colossal Claude. Colossal Claude. Yes. <laughs> okay. I, you know, I've never heard of Colossal Claude. Exactly. I, I was like, what in the world? So I had to read further. He's a sea cryptid. Really? The crew of the lightship Columbia during a relatively calm 1934 day on the Columbia River bar spotted Claude. A uh, crew member says he was 40 feet long. Wow. Had a neck some of eight feet long, a big round body, a mean looking tail, and an evil sneaky look to its head. Hmm. So this crew member pointed him out to fellow crew members, and they spent some time watching it through binoculars. They asked for permission to lower a boat and go after it, but officers discouraged the plan for fear it would swamp the boat. (laughs) Yeah. Like, what is it? We don't know. Go get it. Yeah. And the officer's like, no, you're not going to go get it. No, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it should be noted that... um, the lights and radio beacons that guide s- steamers safely to and from um, the basically rough seas at that time. Okay, so this is back during the steamships, like big paddle wheels and steamships and stuff. Yeah. Uh, now, um, <laughs> so the Oregon—I <clears throat> can't even say it. Oregonian. Yeah. Said that the crew had successfully endured a month of dangerous storms. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> meaning that only one crew member snapped, he became insane. Yeah. Right. And had to be tied up for safety until a lighthouse tender was able to creep close enough three days later to take him off and hustle him ashore uh, where he could relax and quiet his nerves. <laughs> so um, I, I was wondering, why did they put this in here? I mean, we're talking about Colossal Claude. I guess they're trying to show that just, you know, the weather was bad. It was a continuous thing. And, you know, it's just maybe the stress made them hallucinate or have a false sighting. That's kind of weird. Yeah. But it. You know, then to counter that, in 1937, there was another colossal clod sighting. 40 feet long, 4 foot waist in measure. Um, A long, hairy, tan-colored creature with the head of an overgrown horse. Yes. Yeah. So local fishermen are like, yep, that's Claude. (laughs) So marine biologists, memory, I can't even say it. Marine biologists said that Claude was probably a whale shark Mm -hmm. or some form of... um, um, Alasmo branch? What is even, that? I don't even know what an Alasmo branch is. I don't either. Yeah. I wonder if Google hmm. will tell me. Possibly. So. so in 1967, Peter Carnes, who described himself in the Oregonian, Oregonian? Yeah. As a Portland writer of reasonable sobriety <laughs> and credulity. <laughs> so reasonable sobriety, right? <laughs> so did for years it looked as Colossal Claude would prove... Uh, would provide the state's chief competition for Scotland's legendary Loch Ness Monster. Yeah. Okay. And he was regularly seen by reputable witnesses, although there are undoubtedly some tall tales told about him, too. 
So, okay, they were saying this thing is going to be Loch Ness Monster Competition, but then he disappeared. Yes. And he hasn't shown up since the mid-50s. Hmm. And he still hasn't shown up. Yeah. So he hasn't been mentioned in the Oregonian, Oregonian newspaper since 1967. Okay, so you got Bigfoot who's shown up in the newspaper some 3,000 times in the past 50 years. Yeah. So I'm going to go back to look at the title of the article. Yes. Oregon's most famous mythical creature. It may not be the beast that you think it is and go, yes, it is the beast that I think it is. <laughs> I would have to say, yes, I think it is Bigfoot's. So clickbait? I don't know. I mean, it is interesting to see that there was something else there, whether it's a water horse or, you know, plesiosaur or something like Loch Ness would be attributed to. Yes. The Loch Ness monster, old Nessie. But... I mean, if you, if you only have a smattering of reports, but then you've got Bigfoot, who's been in the newspaper over 3,000 times, I'm going to say that I think Bigfoot is definitely the uh, yeah. most famous cryptid, mythical creature I know. in I, Oregon. It's disappointing because I, I love the idea of sea cryptids, yeah. but... Yeah, this was kind of a letdown. I mean, it's it's nice that he had such a. I like the name Colossal Claude. That's kind yeah, of yeah, but cute. I mean, how do you, it's just kind of a dumb name. <laughs> we just <laughs> like what kind of you know? Hey man, what's your cryptid name? I'm Sasquatch. I'm Yeti. I'm Yowie. You know, what's your name? I'm Colossal Claude. I'm forty feet long, and four foot around. <laughs> that's like you know I don't know man. That's kind of a forty foot long is about the size of a school bus, like a sixty five passenger school bus. Okay. But then you're only four foot around. That's like a trash can. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you get, if you get like a big 55 gallon trash can, it's about four foot in diameter. Yeah. So it's just a long, skinny, brown, tan. Don't hate on the sea cryptids. All right. Well, I mean, I'm not <laughs> hating on the sea cryptids. I'm hating on Colossal Claude. Hey. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's Colossal Claude. What kind of name is that? That does not invoke anything. Well, neither are all the cute names for the other sea cryptids. You better go to sleep tonight or Colossal Claude will get you. Like, Nessie sounds adorable, and so does Champy. Well, that was on purpose. Champy. You know? Like, the cha- also, Lake Champlain. Also, touristy <sighs> and on purpose, Colossal Claude. So, hmm. I th- thought it was cute. <laughs> See, <laughs> but there, there you go. go. There's your point. creature feature about a creature you didn't know about. Colossal Claude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> better than Dudley Dud. I just made that up, everybody. Dudley Dud. What would Dudley Dud be? Same as Claus or Claude. Nothing. <laughs> just going to show him. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so I think at this point we need to move on to maybe some stupid news. Okay. Yeah. So police are looking for a man that shoplifted a chainsaw by sticking it down his pants. <laughs> yeah. So basically this guy walked out of the store with a chainsaw. Yes. In his pants. So where do you think this is? Mm. California, you're right. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So he was caught on camera stealing a chainsaw from a store by stuffing it in his pants. Yes. Yeah. It happened on Thursday in a hardware store in Fresno. It says surveillance footage shows the man pushing the chainsaw down his pants, then covering it with his jacket before leaving the business. <laughs> the store owner says the man was seen leaving in a pickup truck. Police will hope that someone will recognize the man in the video and report him to author- to authorities. Now, I'm watching the video. Yeah. And it's, like, really good footage. If only we had good, like, Bigfoot footage. It also moves. And it's like, how does he get it? Uh, do you see the footage moving? It's like, did somebody record him doing this yeah, on a smartphone? Yeah, of course he did. Okay. He's getting it in there. Nice. That's got to be uncomfortable. How did he walk out so casually? Well, it doesn't have a blade on it. <laughs> so he's... <laughs> this is silly. See, I don't know. I. How do you walk out with like that big... Because chainsaws are heavy. Yeah. How do you even do that? And why? Maybe he just needed some stuff he had in the chainsaw. Oh, gosh. That's so bad. I don't know. So. Well, okay. So speaking of pants and other stuff like that. <laughs> okay. So Great if you're segue. in South Yeah, if you're in South Carolina, wildlife officials, right? Yes. Would like you to document something. Oh, what? Yeah. If you see horseshoe crabs having sex <laughs> on Hilton Head, take a picture. 
Oh, and they're serious about it. Yeah. Yeah. So. so. I like how the article reads. Spring breakers aren't the only ones populating Hilton Head's islands and the beaches these days. It's also mating season for the horseshoe crabs. Why? I, well, well I mean, it's that time of year when those strange armored creatures with the long tails start showing up en masse to Hilton Head, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this is where they all get together, these, <clears throat> these crabs, and they fornicate to make more horseshoe crabs. <laughs> so... The biologists of the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources are asking beachgoers to help with their research by taking pictures. Oh. So they can research into the horseshoe crab's habits and behavior. Yeah. And so if you're out there and you see a bunch of horseshoe crabs getting it on, you should they want you to take a picture and send it to them. And they'll even give you a copy of your footage back if you'd like. So if you want your crab porn back, <laughs> they'll be more than happy to uh, give it back to you. I didn't under I didn't realize this was so important. So Hey crab. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah. Are you setting the mood for That's horseshoe right. crabs? The sun will give it to yeah. Two thousand to four thousand eggs. That's a lot. That's a lot of little horseshoe crabs. Yeah. These things look like cryptids. That's why I... Well, yeah, they I, look like the alien face huggers. Yeah. With shells on them. Oh, now you do have to be very specific when you submit your crab porn. You need the date and time. Yes. The approximate number of horseshoe crabs. Yes. GPS coordinates, or the best you can do with Google Maps. Did you know these things can live for almost 20 years? Yes, I did. That's crazy. Yeah. Photos, if available, and a contact email address. Yeah. And I know that they can live 20 years because back when I was a little kid, uh, there was a group of biologists in Virginia that wanted you to turn in old-looking horseshoe crabs that were passing away. Yeah. And they would actually try to test how old they were. That's crazy. Yeah. So. This is actually brilliant, though. Yeah, because they're doing research for the biologists. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, they ask you to, to turn in a picture, and you do. You, you turn in your little picture there of uh, the crabs doing their crab stuff, <laughs> you know, which just means that that's one less research, researcher that they actually have to have there, and they're probably going to get more accurate results. That's true. You know, because, I mean, think about it. There's people down at the beach all the time, so unless they got a researcher down at the beach, they, they would miss it. How can you cover all the square footage, right? Just the sheer, like, the shoreline and yeah. Hilton Head's pretty, I mean, you know, come on. Well, because, like, these things pass away in, like, Chicks Beach, Virginia. And when they do, uh, it's massive. I mean, the whole shoreline's covered. You can't even walk in it. And I do like how they put some specifics, though. Spawning horseshoe crabs typically occur groups of two or more crabs along the shoreline. (laughs) Spawning horseshoe crabs are not single crabs or upside-down stranded crabs. (laughs) So don't just... (laughs) So don't be just, like, randomly taking pictures of possibly dead crabs and send them to them. So they're like, hey... What you need is you need pictures of you know the horseshoe crabs getting it on. Yes. So. And if you'd like to contribute to this very weird project, we will have a link in the show notes. So. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go, crab porn. Hmm. What do you think about that? Uh, very weird. Yeah, it's very weird. So. Okay, so let's talk about this ash. What is it called again? <clears throat> Illuminate. Illuminate, the Psychic and Healing Arts Expo. Yeah. And okay. So yeah. this is the thing that Mr. Bobby was talking about from Asheville Past Lives Project, Project. right? Yep. He was talking about an upcoming event that was going to be happening as he talked about past lives, past life regression. You know, the the uh, um, non hypnot You don't have to be hypnotized for this. Like, you, know, you see it on TV where if you want to research your past lives and stuff like that, you have to be hypnotized. Yeah. Yeah, Bobby doesn't do that. Hmm. So that was the thing, and we had him on the show, and we talked a little bit. And um, he gave us a call to talk about, you know, Illuminate and this upcoming event that's happening pretty close to uh, where we are. Where's it at? Oh, uh, this is going to be in Flat Rock, North Carolina yeah. at the Blue Ridge Community College and Conference Center. Sweet. Yeah. So he actually gave us a call and said, hey, I got some information about it. So um, let's go ahead and, and, like, play that so that other people can hear it, too. Okay. All righty. Hi, this is Bobby B. from the Asheville Past Lives Project. I want to invite you Creep Geeks listeners out to the Illuminate Psychic and Healing Arts Expo. It's April 13th and 14th, 10 to 6, at the 
Hi, this is Bobby B. from the Asheville Past Lives Project. I want to invite you Creep Geeks listeners out to the Illuminate Psychic and Healing Arts Expo. It's April 13th and 14th, 10 to 6, at the Blue Ridge Community College in beautiful Flat Rock, North Carolina, conveniently located near Asheville, Hendersonville, and Greenville. Uh, we've got 70 readers, healers, and vendors, and free lectures, including a talk by myself on Saturday morning about this fascinating combination of EFT and past lives work. Come by and check it out. Uh, if you go to TheIlluminateExpo.com, there's a $2 off coupon for admission, only $9 otherwise. And if you're a Creep Geeks listener, come by and say something creepily geeky. Hope to see you there. Bye. Yeah. I like the way you ended that. <laughs> creepily geekly. Okay, bye. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, go see Bobby B. Yes. At The Illuminate. And we may actually go to that as well. Uh, April 13th and 14th. 13th and 14th. 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. $9. Hmm, that's so, not bad. Yeah. So there you go. If you like the woo-woo stuff, you should uh, go check that out. Yeah, I'm looking. I think we actually have a definition of woo-woo. Oh. Yeah, this was recorded a while ago. I don't know. I wonder if I can play that. Yeah. So if this doesn't turn out well, I apologize in advance. <laughs> Woo-woo, relating to or holding unconventional beliefs regarded as having little or no scientific basis, especially those relating to spirituality, mysticism, or alternative medicine. And she goes, that's why I add that I use the term <coughs> affectionately because I think spiritual is a little too heavy. She coined the comment, connecting with ordinary things in extraordinary ways. Yeah. Oh. Very nice. Okay. That was kind of weird. Yeah. Well, they're going to have readers, healing work, vendors, lectures, crystals, jewelry, gifts, and more. Nice. So definitely check that out. We will have a link in the show notes. And um, like Bobby mentioned, he's going to be speaking on Saturday. Yeah. So, yeah. Saturday. And you can swing by and, <laughs> and say something creepily geekily. <laughs> <laughs> you should be like, creepily like, You should... <laughs> Watch a whole bunch of Scooby like, Doo episodes just to be inspired <laughs> and yeah. say something. <laughs> now Bobby's a cool cat. You should definitely check him out. Yeah. Um, and the, the whole past lives thing. We're actually going to have him on the show again. Yeah. And talk a little bit more about past lives and get a little bit deeper into it. So, pretty interesting subject overall. So, if you're in that particular area and you want to go, you should go. Cool. And you can expand your horizons a little bit. So, speaking of expanding horizons, so we started a blog like a video series, a web series, called In Real Life, we joined a paranormal investigation team, right? Yeah. And we actually, you know, joined M&D. They've been kind enough to let us kind of go along with them and learn this whole thing. And we've been on some recent investigations, and we're going to be doing a follow-up podcast with M&D pretty soon. And we're also going to be releasing videos um, about our experiences. And pretty much we've been a fly on the wall for some of these, so it should be pretty interesting. And you can definitely uh, find those when they are released on – uh, YouTube on our YouTube channel yeah. and also in the Facebook group and our website. So either way, when they come out and we start talking about it in our podcast, we'll definitely point you in the right direction. But you know, all the stuff that we do winds up on creekbeaks.com. So you can definitely check that out. So that'd be kind of cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. So what have we been doing so far? Kind of hanging out. Here's some stuff that we've been doing. We've gone on um, multiple investigations right we've made a smattering of videos here and there we've been doing the podcast we've been getting ready for the events in georgia and some other events that we're going to and attending and been relatively busy so it's been kind of a good thing for us so far mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately we've been like super busy one of the things that we are looking at though is bringing the live stream back yes and so we have found a wonderful place where we could do that, and I think that we're probably going to go ahead and fire that back up again. So, if you're listening to the podcast and you've never seen the live stream, the live stream basically is us and everything we talk about, and you'll be able to see that to participate with us as well. Yeah. Live chat, live stream. So, if you're interested in that and you need some more information, you can definitely contact us. Uh, you can basically hit up our email. You can do contact at creepgeeks.com and kind of find us that way but 
Yeah. And so we'll let you know when that's going to happen as far as when we fire up the live stream. Seems like a lot of people like that. Yeah. As far as whether the live stream is going to be on YouTube or Facebook, remains to be seen. We started out doing the live streams on YouTube. We may stick with that, but if you have an opinion one way or the other, let us know. Well, it was weird because when we were doing them on Facebook, it was, I don't know. <clears throat> it was wonky. It didn't work right. It was weird. But then it started working right for exactly three weeks. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so. So. so here we go. If there's some things that you would want to pay attention to on Amazon, as far as watching documentaries and stuff like that, we have a couple things that we have been watching. True. Yeah. And we did watch the Bob Lazar Area 51 and Flying Saucers, which is good. It's recent, right? thought that was pretty interesting. That's on Amazon Prime. Um, the Hunt for Skinwalker, with the original book by George Knapp, that's also on Amazon. You can pick it up. It's a good book. And what else was there? Kentucky Wildman. I'm actually adding it to the podcast as we speak. Okay. If you, <laughs> uh, and let's, let's throw this out there with a grain of salt. If you watch this, and we have a link to it, I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> just come across with your own. Uh, don't hold us accountable for this recommendation. For this 109 minutes. It's 109 minutes, and it's, uh, what was it called again? Kentucky Wild Man. It is called The Wild Man of Kentucky, The Mystery of Panther Rock. Yeah. It's got lots of animations and stuff in it. It's just like, it was a train wreck of... A documentary. And that's all we're going to say about that. But if you watch it and you hate it, th don't don't give us the hate, man. Here's the thing, though. It was from 2008. And while I'm not totally familiar with everybody who took part in this documentary, some of the names do stand out. And they've gone on to better things and, I guess, seasoning their investigation skills. But Okay, well... This documentary, I did not glean any new knowledge. That is my biggest criticism. Well, they did talk about Mammoth Cave. Barely. But I'm sorry, not Mammoth Cave. Was it Panther Cave? Panther Rock. Panther Rock. Yeah. And I think they did make mention of um, Mammoth Cave. This it's, is in Kentucky, but. Yeah. Yeah. If you see it on Amazon, we have a link to it, and you're looking, give it a shot. But, you know, if you hate it, don't hate us. Or just read the reviews and make your own decision. Yeah, the, the <laughs> reviews are actually pretty funny. So, but yeah, it's bet all for that. So, anyway, there you go. Yeah. So, if you feel the need to contact the Old Creep Geeks podcast, there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can reach us at contact at creepgeeks.com. Or you can go to creepgeeks.com and click the contact us link. It's on basically... The top of the page, the bottom of the page, and any subset pages. Yeah. Uh, you can also reach out to us on Facebook. Facebook, the official page is Creep Geeks Podcast. Just type it into the search and you'll find us. Uh, we are also on Instagram, Twitter, things like that. Shoot us a message on there. Say hi. We love to chat. And we love to check out other interesting people on Instagram. Yeah. So... Yeah. Now, in the show notes, you will find links to all of our other stuff. Um, we mentioned earlier Cheap Geek, the Cheap Geek YouTube channel, and Cheap Geek Facebook. Uh, we provide content on those platforms as well. And I have a little Instagram as well, The Ordinary Hiker. So if you like hiking and just kind of interesting outdoors nature photos, check me out there. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of good stuff. Mm hmm. So, anyway, there we go. Yep. Do you have anything you'd like to add? No, uh, other than I am looking forward to the Bigfoot conference yes. and the live streams, bringing those back. And I really want to get some of our, our new friends and some of our previous guests onto the yeah. show for a follow-up. And we do, yes. And we're also going to be announcing sometime soon the Paranormal Roundtable 2. Ooh. dun 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 where we have a bunch of like-minded individuals come and talk about all things paranormal. So that'll be upcoming. And if you are interested in participating in that on any level, reach out to us now so we can start chatting, uh, you know. Yes. Get to know you. So we can get it, uh, yeah, because limited space for our speakers and also limited space for the participants. But mm -hmm. um, should be fun. But it will be live streamed. Yeah. 
So, <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, this has been the Creep Geeks Podcast. This is episode number 116, and this was Colossal Claude, Triplets, Plague, PA, and upcoming <laughs> events. Yeah. So, anyway, thanks for listening. We very much appreciate it. So, uh, see you later. Take it easy. Bye bye. Bye.